Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to rest, but allow us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the blood of you, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in haste, now and the hour of our death. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to rest, but allow us from evil. Amen. And I could listen to the silent whisper of my life. Something is coming up. The word by also became a part of my life. Slowly, I lost the control of my body. And we found out that day that I have brain cancer. I need Christ. I can say that cancer confirmed me in a priestly calling. I think I will always trust him now, even in the darkest points of life. God works all things for good, for those who love him and those who have been called for his purpose. Many tragedies happened in my life. At that time, I was really ashamed and uh, I was worried why it happened to me, why all things happened to me. Because at that time I could not understand the purpose behind these tragedies. But now I realize that God has a plan for my life. I can say that He made me His own. I am Father Elias Sidokunil. I belong to the Archdiocese of Telicheri, presently working as a parish priest. I was born in an agricultural family. My mother and father was insisting me to grow in faith. Especially, she was insisting me to attend Holy Mass every day. I strongly believe that this was the basis of my occasion. I still remember my parish priest, Father Matthew Kanakaj. He inspired me a lot. I was really wondering that how he enjoyed his priesthood. So I also decided to embrace the life of a priest. So after my secondary studies, I joined in our minor seminary in Telisari. That was the starting of my priestly formation. So I completed the first three years successfully. Then my bishop sent me to Gushapet Major Seminary Kunnot for my philosophical studies. That also was successful. After six years, I was sent to Archbishop's house for regency. I still remember the day I received a castle from a bishop. From the childhood onwards, that was really a dream for me. To wear a cassock at least once in my life. That was a symbol of priesthood. It was really a blessed moment in my life. After my vacation of two months, I had a call from my archbishop. He offered me a chance to continue my studies, my theological studies in Rome, Italy. Days 
has passed very well because it was a new culture new people it is really a dream of every catholic to meet pope once in his life in my life also that moment has come i met pope benedict the 16th it was really a blessed moment in my life so the days have gone i enjoyed a lot but after three months i noticed that my hearing ability was losing day by day so i went to my formator and informed him about that then we consulted a doctor after observing he prescribed a scanning for my brain anyway the very next day we went for an mri scanning the doctor called me myself and my formator to his cabin doctor showed me my scanning report he said to me you have only 3 more months to live i was not understanding anything i was really worrying why it happened he said there was a big tumor in my brain it's last stage so there is no hope i was going to die i was asking myself god why me i only want to become his priest but it happened to me but there was no answer it was really shocking for me discussions was going on with my archbishop where the surgery must be done whether it is in rome or in india anyway after all discussions we agreed that i have to come back to india for the surgery it was in 2012 january i came back to india then i consulted a doctor in lissi hospital at ernakulam he fixed a date for my surgery it was on 28 february 2012 two days before my surgery my archbishop arranged a spiritual guidance and conversion for me i went to a spiritual director the word he expressed at that time that was really a healing for me just before my surgery he said that there is a signature of god on your tumor it is actually a healing to me just before the surgery i see this was also a providence of god in my life after my surgery rest i came back to that priest and thanked him for his sentences beautiful sentences he was really wondering that uh, i don't remember that uh, such a word such a sentence i used then i understood that how amazingly god interferes in the difficulties of our life I still remember the day of my first surgery. God used that day to teach me a lesson that I got a conviction that in some of our moments, some of our difficult moments in life, God alone will be with us. After entering operation theater, I was lying on a stretcher. In that time, around five minutes, I was alone, completely alone. on that operation theater there was a really a moment of conviction in my life there were many people in front of operation theater who loves me who cares me very much who prayed for me but in the operation theater i am alone with god so i got a conviction that in some of my, our difficult moments in our life 
God alone is with me. He only can help us. Anyway, that uh, operation started. Hours have gone. After the surgery, uh, it was really painful days for me. After two or three weeks, I came back to seminary. I was taking a rest. There was an observation period. Maybe there is a possibility that my tumor may come again for that. So Bishop and Curia members met together and they decided I cannot be promoted. I was not ready to take rest. So I asked him to send me for any studies, uh, especially any graduation or uh, uh, diploma studies. So Bishop asked me to take a master believe. That means master of social work. But I was not that much interested in that course. I preferred philosophy because I liked philosophy very much. I asked him uh, to allow me to study philosophy. But uh, Bishop and Curie Mombes of our diocese insisted me to study MSW. After my college studies, I came back to my bishop, asking him to promote me for theological studies. At that time, I have a problem. After my surgery, I got a problem that my hearing capacity, it is lost. One side, it is lost. So, there was a problem. Then Bishop gave me a concession. After different consultations with canonical experts, Bishop gave me an exception from that truth. He sent me again to theology studies. I continued my theology in Kunnoth, in Kerala. First three years have gone well. Successfully, I completed. There was no much problems. But in the third year, I felt headaches, usual headaches and fallings. Again, I felt. Then people noticed me. Bishop again asked me to go for a consultation with the doctor. So, I went with my formator to see the doctor for the consultation. Uh, again, I have undergone a MRI scanning. The result was really shocking. Doctor said, again, there is a big tumor on your brain. It was really serious. So, there is no hope for us. Only your God can heal you. You pray. I came back to seminary. Many questions aroused in my mind. Why it happens to me? I went to my spiritual father. I said, Father, I am ready to face death. But I need a one day to offer holy mass. I have to be a priest at least for one day. So please pray for me. Anyway, uh, he said, yes, God can heal you. Till now, he was caring for you and again, he will treat you well. I shared this incident to one of my friends and asked him why it happens to me. Again and again, this bad incident to me. Then he said to me that God loves you and also he wants you to know that God loves you. That is why he is giving sufferings. He gives you two times tumor and again other problems. But he is not keeping away from you. He is with you. He cares you. That was really an eye opening for me. The days have gone. I went for the second surgery. It was really a big surgery, about 14 hours. But after the surgery also, I came back to the life. Even the doctors said that I will not survive the surgery. But God has another plan for me. In the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verses 16, Jesus says that 
I have chosen you. You did not choose me. He chosen me. After the second surgery, after two months of rest, I came back to seminary. The format is asked me to take rest for one year. My mindset was different. I have to be a priest. I suggested that I will study in the sick room. No problem. I will write my exams. It was accepted by bishops. So they allowed me to study in sick room without contact to any other people in the seminary. That year also went well. My dream has come to true. On 26, 2018, I was ordained as a priest. It was a very beautiful moment in my life because I know that I was chosen by Jesus. During the journey to this resort, I had to face different difficulties, different kinds of difficulties. Many people told me that I may not be a successful priest, so it is better to go back to home, discontinue the priesthood. But still, I believe that Jesus called me. Many defeats are with me. My hearing capacity lost. Then another serious problem was my blindness. I am half blind. I cannot write even a single word with right hand. But God has gave me a strength to my left hand to write anything I want. God has his own plan to strengthen us. Ten years back, doctors in Rome told me that I have only three more months to live. Even after ten years, I still continue as a priest. My most joyful moment is to offer Holy Mass for God. Holy Mass. I don't know how much happiness, how much joy I got during that time. That is my real passion. I only prayed for at least one day I have to offer Holy Mass. But merciful Lord gave me many years to offer Holy Mass. Still I am offering every morning. I am with God and God is with me. You know, God may give you different difficulties, different problems in your life, but believe, believe that you are not alone. God will not let you be alone. He is with you all the difficulties. He knows how to handle the difficulties. So from my experience, I tell you, God is with us always. We are safe in the hands of God. So strongly let us believe in God. And I know why I got brain cancer. I know now why I survived brain cancer. It is with love. It is to share God's love. It is to share my story. It is to bring everybody to Christ.
Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.